Welcome back. I'm Randy Bueller, joined by Steve Menendian. Hi, everyone. Hi, Steve. Could be better, but I'm not going to complain. That was a pretty interesting match I played. So that's against Kai Boot. So. Yeah, no, Kai had hit some tough spots. He gambled some. I figure Kai won all three games. He just won one of them for you, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I may have I may have had contributed to the losing one of those games, but you think? You know, I just had I had really tough decisions at almost every point, and you know you can you can look back and and, and decide what you you would have done. And in fact, that's a, it's a great match I think for that for for uh, going back and, and looking at the the plays. So I'm interested to see what the commentators had to say. Were you watching my match against Tom just now? No, I was I was uh, <laughs> getting cleaned up after after mine. What happened? I can't figure out. I think he vampiric tutored main phase in a spot where he should have gotten Black Lotus. And so I thought I destroyed him when I top decked a Null Rod. And then he had Dark Ritual. I think he may have vampiric for the wrong card and won because of it. I'm like, I can't figure out how this... I think he must have vampiric for Dark Ritual in a spot where he's supposed to vampiric for Black Lotus. I don't know. That's what it looked like to me anyway. I'm mm -hmm. curious to go back and see how that actually played out. Anyway, yeah, I don't know that I could have done anything differently against Tom. I certainly, uh, I'm sure I, there were a lot of people rooting for me to win that one and knock Tom down another match. Well, you're, you're still locked. You actually, you're locked for the playoffs. Now, yeah, but right? now I'm looking at the four seed, right? I mean, if I win, I'm tied for either first or second, depending on the result of this last match between Efro and Bob. Um, but yeah, by losing, I'm almost certainly going to wind up in the three format. So yeah, I'm definitely happy to have clinched top four. I'm not complaining. Hey, Randy, you Randy, you love more magic. You're all about more magic. So why not have to play more magic yourself? <laughs> Great. I get to play three playoff rounds instead of just one. That sounds awesome. Uh, I can I can try to talk myself into that. I'm not sure I'm buying it. But uh, we do have uh, – I did want to remind everybody, if you weren't here, uh, we had a small announcement earlier. Uh, Wizards asked us to share some information about the Magic Online Championship Series. So I know a lot of you guys see the mocks happening, you know, people getting QPs on Magic Online and trying to win the monthly championship. Well, this is the thing they're all playing for. Uh, this year's is going to be in May. It's in Seattle. And look at that first line under Friday. They're going to play vintage at the Magic Online Championships this year. 16 of the best players Magic Online has to offer. They're going to play Vintage, then they're going to play Modern, they're going to Draft, they're going to play Standard, and then those top four, when they run, if they make it to the finals, they get to play Vintage again. Again. Pretty cool, huh? That's awesome. Uh, who who is uh, do we know who's uh, slated to play in this tournament? I'm glad you asked. I don't even I didn't even tell you to set me up, but yeah, here we go. Uh, Lars Dom is defending champion. He won this event last year when it was in San Francisco. Um, you see season two winner Antonio Damara Leon is actually the most recent Pro Tour champion. So, you know, this was the one thing he did before he then turned around and won the, pro, the, the most recent Pro Tour. And then hiding out as a season seven winner, that is Hall of Famer Ula Rod. Ula plays, oh, he wow. plays vintage too, yeah. Last from the past. Absolutely. He still plays. He does coverage of European Grand Prix fairly regularly. He's on the commentary team over there. And yeah, Ula uh, plays a lot of Magic Online, plays a lot of Vintage. I see him in the daily lists all the time. So yeah, the Hall of Famer is in there. And then uh, you can see the other half of the field here. It should be a super cool event, these 16 guys. See, I want to see what they do with Vintage. That's definitely going to be interesting to see, I think. Well, they get to play a lot of vintage, right? So they'll play three rounds on Friday, and then if they make the cutoff, they'll be playing more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the other, have... go ahead. Will they be able to switch decks, or do they have to play the original deck? They same deck. Basically, okay. the championship match is your vintage deck, your standard deck, and your modern deck. Cool. Yeah, really? best two out of three, best two out of three formats is the championship format. Um, the one other thing that we announced that we announced earlier that that I want to repeat here is the commentary team for this is actually pretty interesting. I mean, you got some of the regulars. I'll be there. Marshall Sutcliffe will be there. Brian David Marshall will be there. Um, but Eric Frolick has been added to the team, so we get to hear Efro's take on vintage, and and he's just been he's doing really good on VSL. So I know that uh, Watsi's happy to use him for this event. And then the guy who's actually making his debut is Kenji Egashira, hmm. Umat the Nummy legendary streamer i guess but yeah kenji's uh he's local to seattle uh he's gonna get the chance to see what he can do in the in the booth for a, a premier event sounds like fun are there any new sets that are going to be legal for this event like uh the m what is it m16 no, origins doesn't come out until july this is in may so it will have dragons of tarkir 
which, I mean, the pre-release just happened. Uh, Dragons will be out. Um, we'll have the Pro Tour. It's basically, it's less than two months from now for this tournament, so it'll be after the Pro Tour, but it's basically the next big thing on the uh, on the calendar after the Pro Tour. Anyway, should be cool. I'm, I'm particularly interested to see Kenji on coverage. I, I want to see. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Speaking of lots of fun, Eric Froelich and Bob Maher. A couple of good friends. I know that they have uh, talked about this format a lot, helped each other a lot. Eric is on dredge. His 6-0 and run came to a crashing halt last week when he got paired against Luis Scott Vargas and mulliganed into oblivion. In a match, Luis estimated he had a 0% chance to win. You know what? Sometimes dredge... They only get the bizarre mulligan until they find the bizarre, and 94% of the time they find it. But that 6% of the time, you wind up with a one-card keep. And that happened to Eric twice, both game two and game three. So he finally lost. Bob Maher, meanwhile, sitting on 2-5, lost last week. Now, this is, a, this is a huge match for Bob. It's probably bigger for Bob than for Eric. See the dredge list yeah. that Eric's got going on there. Uh, Bob, if Bob loses this match then you're safe so you got some rooting interests yeah. here i know i feel terrible I, I bob is such a great guy i hate i hate to root against him here but i i, I feel like i have to on the other hand uh, you know objectively speaking i think bob is really favored in this match yeah bob, bob's sideboard plan if you if you compare it to tom martell's doomsday he has yeah. the full ley line package as well as an additional stuff yeah. i'm really cheated so you know in terms of <laughs> terms of the the package he has for dredge so i think bob has a really good chance to climb out of the two the 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 two uh win hole and and give us all a good scare yeah no it's definitely it is scary if now the reason that things simplify should eric win this match bob and david are paired next week so yes. if bob and dave if, if bob loses this they will be the only two and six players and they're paired so the winner survives and the loser is relegated. It is super clean week nine showdown between best friends, Bob Maher and David Williams. I mean, these guys have been traveling to tournaments together since the 90s. Um, if Bob wins, however, then everybody suddenly becomes a Bob Maher fan because right. it's either a massive tie should David beat Bob or Bob eliminating David from the league. And on the other side of the bracket, we may have uh, implications Eric and LSV may be forced to, to play it off for the one seed. Hey, don't forget Chris. Chris is now tied with Luis. Eric either has a one-game lead or it's a three-way tie for first. And, and Bob, is, Bob has started off with a pretty strong hand. He, if, he can, if he can draw a Lotus or a Ritual, he can potentially just win uh, get the first game out of the blue here. So, And he's got a brainstorm. So... Uh, you know, he's also got the brainstorm is nice against this matchup because you can save the best cards against the therapy. Um, sure. So you're saying you're telling me Bob can win next turn? Oh yeah, for sure. Look at this. Yeah, uh, it's Bob a doomsday a into a gush. gush. He's got doomsday and gush. The, the, of course, he's going to have to. Sh it's a, it's ironic here because you, he's got the the laboratory maniac, which gives him an additional spot in the doomsday pile computation. Um, but it's a little bit more vulnerable here. You can't pitch the the maniac to force, so he's going to have to probably put it back and, and find another something else. But if he finds a lotus here, if he finds, wow, Eric has found the second bazaar, so he's going to go to town. The, the yeah, third, three total bazaars in this draw. Can yeah. Eric turn two? Can Eric win on his second turn? I mean, the deck's capable of it. Definitely. He he, he didn't is, really hit dredgers though, right? I mean, that's the problem. Does not nothing. have much. He has only hit one dredger, so he's got to. He, I guess he's contemplating exactly what he's going to do here, but he can he can still win. Um, he really needs to hit to find some discard too. Yeah, cabal therapy would help him a lot. Either clearing a path for a potentially lethal dredge return, or just preventing Bob from winning next turn. I gotta like Bob's position here, quite frankly. It's very strong. It seems like Bob has an easy win on his third turn, and Eric is grasping at straws to try to win on turn two. Wow, did yeah. Eric just say go? Eric just said go. Fascinating. That may... I mean, he can't win there. Oh, it's got, and, he just doesn't have the dredgers to fill his yard. And now, and now Bob doesn't even have to find an accelerant because he can just play Doomsday the hard way. 
and gushing oh, yeah. to the wind. Absolutely. All right, Eric is going to Bazaar as a response. He has to draw off the top of his library because his only dredger was in his hand, but this does let him put the dredgers back in the yard. Did not find anything there's relevant. More, there's more than enough here to win. For Bob, yeah. No, this yeah. seems relatively Bob, straightforward. Bob's going to put back probably the Maniac and the Flusterstorm. Eric doesn't have Missteps main deck, right? That's what I was just wondering. That seems like the only thing that Bob could even be worried about here is if Eric has some ability to uh, to counter things. Oh, Eric. there's another card in his hand, Misdirection. So yeah, he's going to... What's nice here is that even if even if Eric had... Eric hit, does play Misstep. So four okay. copies of Mental Misstep are the only cards Eric has that can so potentially will, interact. Yeah, he has... Because of the Vampiric Tutor, he... You know, it's, it's six of one, half dozen of the other, but... The basic plan here, the basic line, is that you're going to vamp for the Lotus and Lotus into the the Doomsday and Gush into an easy win. Uh, interesting that he decided not to put back the Maniac, just to 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 give himself another sort of free slot and win Doomsday. Oh, oh, wow! Put back the Vampiric. Okay, put Shuffle the vamp. It away. It's still it's still a simple win here. Yeah. I mean, the vampire can get misstepped. Is he? Can he kill without ever even opening himself up to mental misstep? <laughs> I believe so. He can. Oh, oh no! He'll still have to play the ancestral. Yeah, the guy. I was gonna say. I don't think he can do this. He doesn't have enough land drops to do this without a without ancestral. He can't gush. He can only gush once. With the with the probe. Let's see. Well, sure. Yeah. If you want to get taxing probe and look at Eric's hand, then it becomes a lot easier. Might as well, right? He doesn't need it for his yeah. Doomsday kill. Yeah. The, the the principle with Doomsday is you want to get you want to do all your life loss before playing Doomsday. So, um, you know, I guess that's why I'm a little surprised he didn't he didn't play the vamp on his end step. He didn't need the vamp to win. It just made things a lot cleaner, a lot easier. Right, right. So keeping the misstep makes sense because you're, if you're if you're Eric and you have a misstep, you, there's a good chance you want to throw it into the into the probe. And it's also a lot of peace of mind, right? When you're building your doomsday pile, you want you want to have some peace of mind. Yeah, I mean Bob's got Bob's got everything he needs. Two missteps could potentially cause him issues. I guess that's his only concern. I mean, he's got Force at Will for the first one. Do you put a misstep in your pile here? Yeah, you totally do, right? You just gush into Ancestral and Mental Misstep. No. no he's I guess gonna, he needs blue mana. He needs, yeah, he needs a mana. So he's going he's gonna to get the Lotus or the Petal. The Black Lotus or the Lotus Petal. Right, right. Get, get this all kicked off. Yeah, which is, again, where Vampiric for Lotus seems like it would have been good last turn. But this should be good enough. This is remarkable. I mean, from Eric's perspective, having double bizarre usually signals your best chance at a turn two win. And yet Eric is just not able to get it together. And post board, he's going to be confronted with a really, you know, difficult situation. Bob Mars Doomsday deck, you know, which is pretty close to what I ran. I think it may be almost identical to what I ran the, the last year. Uh, maybe one or two cards. It just has such a density of counter magic. It's really hard to get. The ley lines off the table, and once the ley lines off, then jailer and, and company come into play, or you can just combo out. So, what we've seen here is is very unusual, not quite as extreme as last week, but still very unusual. Now, it's a good point, Bob. Bob's not supposed to win game one in this matchup. I mean, he can, but right. this is the match where Eric has by far the best chance. Yeah, and Eric started out with great, you know, great hands with with biz double bizarre is as good as it gets. He looked pretty good. Somehow, Eric with his dredge deck just keeps losing. Pretty unlucky. So that just so folks, if, if they aren't familiar with how this works, the basic idea here is that you get either Ancestral and Black Lotus or Lotus Petal to get you started. So you gush. That's like he's got Lotus, Sapphire, and Ancestral Recall. I mean, he can draw Sapphire into Ancestral, draw the rest of his deck, which includes a Black Lotus, and right. 
Gush, yeah. the Gush draws the first two cards, and then you Ancestral in the final three. And, and typically what you do is you, you get Will and, and you replay the Ancestral. So you what will happen is you Ancestral into the final cards, you replay both Lotus, both Black Lotus and Lotus Petal, then you cast the you cast the Maniac, and then you replay Ancestral to win the game. But here... He He's has, got the Taxing Probe. He's got Probe, and he has the Maniac in hand, so that frees up two slots. Yeah. Yeah, no no reason to get uh, to get Yawgmoth's Will involved in this stack. Just draw a misstep to make sure your pro is going to resolve at the end. There's the Maniac. Here is Kataxian Probe. Good game with triple counter backup. <laughs> Not bad. All right, Bob Maher wins game one. Now Eric Froelich will go to his sideboard for his anti-doomsday plan, right? Yeah, <laughs> his anti-doomsday plan. Uh, yeah, Eric Froelich's gonna... anti-doomsday plan is basically an anti-whatever your sideboarding in against me plan. That's right. He's going to bring in these three chains and the four claims. I don't think it's even close. I don't think he brings anything else. All seven he, of them? Uh, yeah, you, I, I think so. I mean, he, the, problem is, the problem here is he doesn't have an answer besides chain for, for Gixla Jailer, which I believe Bob has. Let's take a look at Bob's. Yeah, let's look at Bob. If he's running what I ran, or pretty close to what I ran, yeah. <laughs> oh, he, so he has one Jailer. He's got four uh, Ley Line. So cards no like artifacts, this. though. So Efro gets to take out his, uh, his artifact destruction that he's got in the main. That's true. So that'll be an easy swap. For Bob, the Jailer is going to be really one of the linchpins here. If he can get a Vampiric Tutor, he can hide the Jailer on top of his deck where it'll be safe from, from being uh, plucked out by any of Eric's discard. So Eric, Eric's going to keep in, sorry, Bob is going to keep in all of his, uh, his efficient counter magic to protect the ley lines. I would also probably keep in the discard. What's going to be cut here, you know, um, I would be inclined, I would be inclined to take out, you know, it, it's hard to cut Imperial Seal because Imperial Seal, again, is going to be like one of your best turn one plays for finding Jailer. So I would probably keep in Imperial Seal, even though it seems more marginal. Hercules Recall is an easy cut, but then after that, he needs to find five, five more slots. <clears throat> Dark Ritual is, is, is nice because it can accelerate out a ley line that's top deck later, so I would be hesitant to cut that as well. You might just go into the Doomsday package. Like, there's no, you know, there's no real reason to have four Doomsdays. Maybe cut one Doomsday, maybe even Tendrils, although if, if Eric is being un, you know left under the ley lines, he may have to play you know hard cast like two casting cost creatures and pick away at, at Bob's life. But that's probably what's gonna happen here. He's gonna cut the Hercules, he's gonna cut, you know, maybe a doomsday and a couple other smattering of cards. And um, yeah, here we go. Bob's wow. fast Bob, has, Bob has a really tough decision. He's got a really tough decision. What? Bob has here turn one fast spawn ancestral, but he yes. doesn't have the jailer and he doesn't have the ley lines. So this is really tough. You told really me he tough. even has a time walk. Yeah, he even has the time walk, but he doesn't have gush. So, you know, Bob and Bob being up a game, it's really tempted to keep this hand. I certainly I would keep that hand if I was Bob. What, what he doesn't know is Eric has the double misstep. So he's going to be oh. not going to work out like he planned. Yeah, Bob does keep. Yeah, and you lead yeah. with fast bond, right? Oh, oh, and he drew ley line of the void. Oh. Uh, <laughs> one turn too late, sort of. One card too late. This fast bond is going to get snapped off for, in the middle of For sure. sure. <laughs> And, and it's yeah. a nice clean break here. He gets to discard some dredgers, and he found another bazaar. Oh, holy smokes! Eric, Eric is sitting pretty. He might even be able to have a, his his the, the kill that eluded him the previous game here on turn two. Totally true. Yeah, he discarded dredger, dredger, bridge from below. That's pretty good. That's as about as good as it gets. And he discarded the the troll and the imp. The only thing that would have been better is troll, troll, bridge, <laughs> <laughs> which he's found. So. <clears throat> Now the only question is, you know, bringing in all the, these hate cards, has he decreased his sort of package, his density of his his kill package? 
Um, so that's the only thing that might hold him up from really winning here. But looking at, by the look of the things, he's hit just about everything he's want to hit. He's wanted yeah. to hit. Dredges the Grave Troll on his draw step, hits the Narcomoeba, so that goes into play. Now he can play second Bazaar. And he's got multiple bridges in the graveyard as well. Yeah, you just play second Bazaar, and I guess, what's he, what's he got to worry about now? There's no Ravenous Traps for Bob, right? No, no. The only player in this in this match who has Ravenous Traps is Eric in his sideboard. Yeah, mm -hmm. so dredge, dredge, fill it up. This so really illustrates the danger of, of, you know, no matter how attractive these hands are, you know, if you don't have the ley line or you don't have access to the Jailer, it's it's just potentially not keepable. I mean, you I can't don't... mulligan fast bond ancestral time walk. I, I don't know. You, you can. You can. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't. Bob could kill in the first turn if Eric doesn't have a misstep. It's true. I mean, fast bond into ancestral if you find a gush, but. Right. Um, but but the problem. And even the if you problem, don't find a gush, you can time walk. Well, yeah, you need another. You need to draw a land with the ancestral to do that. Sure. Um, but and I'll just preordain instead. I, I you, there's no way Bob's mulligans against that draw. Well, be, I mean, I think one way to think about it is that you know, ancestral draws three cards, but Leyline draws like twenty. You know, it's just if, so if, much more. If you can promise me that my six card hand has a ley line, then I'll then I'll listen. But the six card <laughs> hand is less than fifty fifty to have well, a ley line in it. Well, just ley line generates so much more card advantage than than his plan. I'm not saying I. I probably would have done the same thing, you know. Being on, the, being up a game actually makes it a lot more attractive. But I don't think that changes it. But meanwhile, Eric casts Cabal Therapy, sacrificing his Narc Amoeba, which turns into three zombies. You get to see the Dredge deck do what the Dredge deck does here, right? He uh, has three bridges in his graveyard, so the Narc Amoeba turns into these three zombies. He's going to Cabal Therapy, naming what's he naming? Yixla Jailer? Yeah, Yixla Jailer. <laughs> First case scenario. Name the card that you just want to make sure your opponent doesn't have on their next turn. How that many card, exactly how many cards are left in Eric's library at this point? Just a bit too tiny for me to be able to see. 23. Yeah, he uh, needed to hit more Narc Amoebas if he was going to actually win this turn. It doesn't feel like he can actually make enough zombies to Dread Return King. I do see the, uh, the Flamekin Zealot. I do see the Dread Return, but sacrificing zombies to flashback Dread Return doesn't actually do anything. So he can't quite win on turn two. He has to say go, seize that hand, and yeah, there were no Yixla Jailers in it. So how bad can it be, right? He's even got the mental misstep for Bob's Ancestral. I think we lost Steve. We'll try to get him back on. I can do some solo commentary and get him. Now Bob's got to figure out what to do. I think Bob pretty much knows if he gives Eric another turn, he's dead. All right, Eric is going to find the rest of his Narc Amoebas, or he's going to... And there may already be some blood ghasts in the graveyard. I'm pretty sure I see at least one that will come out off Eric plays a land. So, I mean, Bob's decision is Time Walker Ancestral. He's going to Time Walk. Fair enough. No real reason not to. This gets him a land drop. This will also get him uh, the ability to cast the Ancestral and the Preordain. So, Bob's Time Walk turn, Duress. Interesting. So I guess Bob's play is probably to duress and clear a path, or does he just ancestral here? He doesn't have the third black mana for Doomsday. I like this play. I like the preordain out there. If he doesn't have the misstep, you're making progress. If he does, you know, he's likely to use it. So that play makes a lot of sense. Sure. Now, if you're Eric, do you misstep? I think so. <clears throat> it's not an yeah, easy. Yeah. yeah. Well, he cabal therapy. He knows about the ancestral recall. Oh, oh he knows the ancestral there, of course. Yeah, he cabal uh, therapy. Yeah, in that case, you, in that case, you probably hold it. <laughs> yeah. 
let the preordain resolve. So in the best case scenario here, yeah, the, the problem is the ley line no longer functions. So right, um, damage has been done. The damage is done. Probe, dig, dig, dig. Puridane finds Gataxian probe. He's going to see the mental misstep. And Eric's like, yeah, I get a mental misstep. What do you want? You want to spend that <laughs> on a duress? Fine. Not that Eric knows about the duress. That was actually Bob's draw phase. Dark ritual. ritual. Wow. I see. He can dark ritual doomsday, but his ancestral would get misstepped if his dark ritual didn't. And then and he doesn't then... have a spare mana to fire off the duress. One Things critical got... question. Yeah, one Six. critical question is what whether Eric has cyborged out the, the the dread return package. Because if he if he cyborged out the dread return package, including the flame Kenzie lots and dread returns, then it's possible that Bob could, you know, doomsday wow. here. There's a flame Kinsella in Eric's graveyard. Okay, so that rules that out. He is dead on board. Bob has to find a way to win here. Wow, that mental second mental misstep is going to get him though, isn't it? It's fantastic. How the second mental misstep? Well, the only thing he's missed up so far, I believe, is the fast bond. So the second one has just been sitting there. No, I know, but I mean, Bob knows about it, right? Bob cast Cataxian Probe, so yeah. and Eric cast Cabal Therapy. The only information that is hidden from anybody is the duress and the dark ritual that Bob has. Yeah, there's no really way. There's no real way around it. But I think Bob still has a land drop. This is his third turn, right? Yeah. So Bob, Bob's only line here is duress and then ancestral, and and pray that he finds it, Lotus Bob, Gush. Lotus Gush. Well, he and can then, go. He can go underground. See ritual duress. Yeah, that's probably you're right. That's probably what he's thinking about. That makes because that makes, then then the lotus and the the lotus and the jet become good enough. Yeah, yeah. If he ancestrals in the Lotus Gush, he can he can win. Or there are a couple other things with the additional two mana. So that makes that makes sense. I, that's I think not you're what right. Did. Yeah, I think I think your line is actually a little bit better. It's close. I mean, the, the ritual might get misstepped, but in that case, it's the same as tapping that black mana for duress. Well, almost the same. Right. What just happened? He cast the ancestral right after clearing a path with duress. Yeah, I think we're it's, just waiting for program. Air spawns here. Oh, wow. oh my God, Randy! If he had, yeah, he's he's still not completely dead. But if he had, I guess not he, completely yeah. dead. Doesn't he win from here? It's the same result. It's gonna dark be ritual. Yogmas will. No, you're right. He's got fast bond. He he. Well, so here's the, here's yeah. He's gonna he's gonna go dark ritual. Yogmas will, and then he can replay the, the lotus pedal and fast bond. Um, and he can go pretty far, but how far? Yeah, how far is the question? I think if he has two more lands, he can win, right? Because he can, then he can Dark Ritual Doomsday. Is there a the will. in his graveyard? Or no? He has a Time Walk in his graveyard. Well, the Bob's Time Walk only has the one land. And he's played his land for the turn. So he can't get more mana okay. unless he fast bombs, which he does. Right. right. So he's going to play... He's gonna Wait, are there two fetch lands at the top of that? There's a second fetch land at the top of his graveyard, isn't there? Yeah, so he gets two lands and a dark ritual. So he can go second land, he can go dark ritual doomsday, and then he has... He has to po probably ponder or preordain into a gush, right? Or... Funny, yeah, he's got Yogmoth's will in effect and an ancestral in his graveyard. It seems like that should help, but he yeah. can't use it to get into the bootstrap his way into the doomsday pile because, of course, doomsday exiles everything from the graveyard. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I think the correct line here is actually just to ancestral, it, but not even doomsday yet. Just hold that up because if you can get enough storm, you could actually potentially win with tendrils. So you might not even need to go down that route. I, I like this play too. Yeah. First probe. Okay. There we go. So he's he's fine. He's going to be able to gush bond out. <clears throat> I think yeah. I think it's I think at this point does he have one more land left in his graveyard or he has both in play? No, oh, they're both in play. He has two fetch lands in play that he yeah. can crack. The line that I would do here is I would break these fetch lands, merchant school for gush, gush, and then reset. You're you're drawing two cards and you get to replay two lands. 
By the way, I think you throw a dark ritual in there first. You can merchant scroll with a black mana and have two black floating. Sure. But so you're not going to doomsday at all here. You're just going to merchant scroll for gush and hope that that finds you the tendrils. He doesn't well, he actually has... have access to the tendrils yet, does he? No, but he has ancestral and he has preordain in his graveyard, right? Yes. And he yeah. has, I mean, with the fast bond in play, I agree. Gush seems yeah. great. Yeah, you, you go the gush bond route here, I think. And you take it as far as you can, and if you have to doomsday, then it's still available to you. So he's doing exactly what you suggested. Ritual, yeah. then, then scroll for gush. Makes perfect sense. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> I, Eric can't win with this deck. This dredge deck is cursed. This is going to be 08, <laughs> right? It, it really went 0-6 in the first half, first third of the season, and now Eric's going to go to 0-2 despite... I thought yeah, he it, had this game. It's hard to imagine sculpting a better opening hand for Eric. No, if you give Eric that starting position on his second turn, I think he wins a vast majority of his games oh. on his second turn. So he's he's found another gush, so he's going to be able to continue going. He, um, Just needs to find tendrils at this point. It looks like he has found the Demonic Tutor. So he is going to be able to generate the mana, I think. I think, it, yeah, yeah, he's got more than enough. This is this unbelievable. Is, it's Dredge amazing. Is first, and we have a three way tie for first. And we have the massive sweat. It will not be a clean playoff for last place next week. It will, in fact, be David Williams trying to drag a bunch of people down into a tie with him. <laughs> Because here's Tendrils of Agony, and Eric Frolick, when he started his second turn, he was a huge favorite. And when he said go at the end of his second turn, he was also a huge favorite. Bob had to string together multiple things and claw his way through a mental misstep, but he pulled it off. And Tendrils of Agony drains all the life away from Eric Frolick. Wow. Bob cool. Maher, cool ladies and gentlemen. It's cool to see the Doomsday deck win with the Gushbolt engine here. So you've, you've seen a lot of Doomsday action, but this is nice to see it's plan B. It's a great plan B. It's really powerful. Yeah, Gush Bond gets the job done. Bob Maher wins. Bob Maher ties you, ties Tom, ties Rich. So basically everybody at the bottom of the standings won this week. You and Rich lost to fall back a match. David won, Kai won, Tom won, Bob won. The bottom four players in the standings all got their Ws this week, creating, is it a five-way tie a game ahead of Dave? It is. That's insane. It's a five-way tie for fifth through ninth. Six players are still in trouble going into the last week. That's, that's crazy. Wow. And then, oh, by the way, the one seed is totally up for grabs, too. Um, although, I guess I've clinched. I mean, I think, if I, I think I'm think i exactly fourth, if I'm doing if I'm doing the math in my head, correct? Right. Yeah. Right. Ten, or no, ten, Eric, I think the four Eric and Luis both lost, and, and I lost. So, no, I can, I'm still in it, too. If all three of them lost, I could still get the one seed, hypothetically. Right. Anyway. Wait a second. They all have six, and you have five. So, next week, if you win, yep. and all of them lose, yep. then... <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's four people live for the one seed. Yeah, let's look at the standings here. This should make it easier. We started off with a must-win game for David Williams to keep things interesting in the race for the bottom, and he got there. So, bug still over Oath, eliminating Rich from the playoffs, keeping Dave's hopes alive. Then it was Luis and Chris, the one battle at the top of the standings. You know, some entertaining trash talk on Twitter, and it was Chris who got the win, dragging Luis down into a tie with him at 6-2. and two. Kai versus you. Uh, Kai's Belcher deck got some very explosive draws. Kai had some really interesting lines in those games. Didn't work out for him in game two. He wound up dying to his unpacked negation, but he did get there in games one and three. With Mishra's Workshop, were you expecting Mishra's Workshop from him? I wasn't, but I, I, I thought there was an outside chance. Once he realizes that I'm going to be bringing in nine artifact destruction spells, that he, he needs some way to generate some board presence. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not shocked, but, you know, I was disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Then I played Tom Martell. Uh, it went three games. They all felt kind of close and interesting, but ultimately, Doomsday got it done twice. I, God, I, I thought I had top decked the win in game three, but Tom had Vampiric for 
dark ritual, not Black Lotus. And so he was not, in fact, called to the null rod that I top decked. Uh, so Tom gets his third win, uh, drops me sort of a match behind the first place tie. And then here in the last one, we could have seen Bob versus Dave for relegation next round, but no, Bob gets the win. So he pulls into the mass tie a game ahead of David Williams. Eric falls into the tie for first place. So yeah, Luis, Eric, and Chris are all tied at 6-2. I am at 5-3, a match behind them, still live for any seed in the playoffs. The four of us will be in the playoffs. It's just a question of what the seedings are. And then <laughs> five-way tie with David Williams behind going, okay, I got to – if I beat Bob, somebody's going to lose out of that mess, right? And I think none of you are paired, if I'm can not we, mistaken. Can we see the matches for next week? I can look mm -hmm. them up. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a graphic for it, but it's, it's Luis versus Rich, Chris versus Steve, Kai versus me, and Eric versus Tom. So there can be a six-way tie for 10. Wow. Yeah, if David wins and then the four playoff bound players all win, then we have a six way tie for fifth through tenth. God, six way tie for last. That would be insane. That would be some high stakes tiebreaker matches. We have a six way tie very, for last. Very intense. And so we would, if, if we had the six way tie, then the following week we'd all play it out. Yep. And play how is that? Make a bracket. It would, it would be a bracket. So how would that work? Uh, we roll up the bracket, and two people get super lucky to get buys. Hmm. Four-way tie would be a little cleaner, admittedly. But, I mean, we're not going to play round robin. We'll call the round robin, we'll call that season three. And so the, every loser has to play another loser then? Yeah, basically. You just keep going. Oh, right. So the buy's not even good there, is it? No. The buy sort of... You don't want the buy. You want to avoid... You want to... <laughs> You're right. The buys are bad. Oh, how funny. <laughs> Yeah, you'd rather have more opportunities to get your single win. Right, two unlucky players will get stuck with a bye and will have fewer opportunities to win their way out of the tie. Yeah, you just keep going. Your bracket goes and the losers keep playing until there's only one guy who's over. So if there are, basically, you, if you get two losses, you're, you're, uh, you, and, and it depends on how many people are on the bracket, but it could be two losses and you're out of the league. It could also be three losses and you're out of the league. Yeah, basically. But the good news for you is you're no worse than a tiebreaker. Like the only person that can be last at the end of next week's show is David. David's route out of relegation involves, goes through a tiebreaker match. If David loses, he's just out, which is sad, obviously. But I mean, somebody's going to wind up 10th. Uh, if David loses, he's out. If David wins, um, he wins at least a tiebreaker because at, at a minimum, Bob will be tied with him. He will have defeated Bob. And then it's just how many of the four of you are going to join that tie. That may be the most intense match of our entire week next week. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Where are we, we going to place that one? At the end of the night? We're going to... Seriously. Yeah, obviously you save that one for the end. And everything hinges on it. Awesome. Well, thanks for hanging out, Steve. Oh, Hope you guys out there enjoyed the show. We got one week left in the regular season. Uh, we are currently slated to have an off week after next week. Um, it's the Pro Tour week, so half the league will be in Brussels going to the Pro Tour. Um, if we have tiebreakers, though, we may actually wind up with growing just a new show there for tiebreaker week. So if you aren't rooting for ties already. Uh, <laughs> we're always rooting for more magic, right? More that's, magic, that's... absolutely. Six-way tie for last would be pretty insane. Come back next week. Same time, same place. We'll find out who's going to be last and how the top four are going to shuffle up into the playoff bracket. See you then.